Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Each week while working on the new album, the Dead Milkman ask each other a question. All right, gang. Uh, this week's question, and I have to thank Rodney for helping me out on uh, this question. Uh, this week's question for Big Questions with the Dead Milkman is what location, for example, city, continent, cave, whatever, um, would you like to record an album in? Which is uh, kind of pertinent since we just finished recording an album. Maybe we can think about where we'd like to record our next album. Um, I have two choices, one that's near and one that's far. And I'll start with the one that's near. It's right here in Philadelphia. And I think it would be cool if we could get to record an album in the Eastern State Penitentiary. Now, uh, some of you uh, probably know, most of you might know that we shot the video for Punk Rock Girl in the pen. And uh, interestingly enough, this was before they reopened it as a tourist attraction, which it's been open for quite a while now. So we got to go in uh, way before it became, uh, you know, open to the general public. Uh, and we went in areas that we probably should not have gone into. <laughs> and uh, like up into the guard tower and, you know, don't, want, don't step on that 15th step where you're going to fall to your death. Um, but that was a fun uh, video shoot, uh, interesting to get to roam around there. Um, it was operational from uh, 1828 until uh, all the way up until 1971. And uh, it had uh, some notorious criminals in it, including Al Capone. And uh, we have a picture of his recreated cell that they put together. Um, and there's another guy, a bank robber that I hadn't known about, Willie Sutton was also there. He was one of the 12 guys that had dug a tunnel and came out in the middle of like Fairmount Avenue or something. And, <laughs> um, and uh, it became a model for more than 300 prisons worldwide. And it was built in kind of like a wagon wheel spoke kind of arrangement. And all the cells were basically solitary confinement, which was pretty terrible. Um, and they had low doorways. You were supposed to bow your head and and it had one skylight for light, which was the eye of God that would keep an eye on you and hopefully cause you to reprint, repent your uh, evil doing, doings. Um, and they, everybody had their own little exercise yard outside of their um, cell. And uh, from what I just read um, recently is that you can, they were allowed to have pets, which is interesting. And they were able to garden. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Um, anyway, I suggest if you ever come to Philadelphia, um, please pay a visit. And right now, of course, is Halloween time. And they do special Halloween nights there um, and where they decorate various sections of the uh, prison with spooky, scary stuff. So I, I recommend you check it out. Um, and the far away place that I think would be fun to record an album is in Paris, the catacombs. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, we, we should record like a, a goth uh, or a, a spooky horror movie soundtrack down there. I think that would be appropriate for uh, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll, we'll post some pictures of that. Um, uh, I have to confess that I've only seen pictures. I've never actually gotten to go down in there. I was in Paris a few times, but we never had time to, to tour the catacombs. Anyway, so those are my two suggestions for places to record an album. I was just at Eastern State for Halloween nights. And uh, one of the things they have is they have like three bar areas. So if you get the VIP ticket, you get a free drink in each area. And you've not lived till you've gone to the speakeasy at Al, Al Capone's cell. And I'll put up a picture. I've got a picture of me. I'm, I was drinking beer there, holding the beer up to the little sign for Al Capone's cell. It's, uh, um, yeah, it used to be called Terror Behind the Walls. It's now Halloween Nights, and uh, Vienna and I were there. We would go for our anniversary every year, and uh, it, is, it is a blast. We were drinking. They had very strong adult beverages, and we were drinking these out in the courtyard where they have the, the towers redone. They have these lights on it, and I'm thinking, nobody who isn't from Philadelphia would ever understand this. They just like, what is wrong with you people? So that is, all right, so let's get to my list. Um, first, going to give you people a dirty little secret. And you can make your album sound now like it was recorded anywhere. And this is due to something called a convolution reverb. 
what you basically do is you get a bang, a sound, and then you record that. You make sure you get in stereo. You put it into a convolution reverb, and the convolution reverb then will, will you can apply that reverb to your sounds, and it'll sound like you're in that room. So right now, if you want it to, you could actually make albums, and they, and they sell these whole suites of this that sound like you made it at Abbey Road Studio. Um, I'm going to recommend this thing called Fruity Convolver, and we'll put a link to a video that says, you know, this is like the the app that's, uh, um, you know, the most underappreciated. And I use it a lot. Um, I make convolution reverbs. So I'll, I'll take a recorder somewhere and I'll get a bang sound and I'll, I'll do that. Um, I actually like the sound of the room I'm in, which I specially lined up as a home studio and made sure I put bookcases on each side because I like that sound. So I have an, I have convolution reverbs of my own home if you're interested. All right. So um, now the thing is, since you can get the sound of wherever you are, the point of recording somewhere would be to get the feeling of it, to, to maybe have it enhance your performance. So the first place that I thought of was the Goatman Bridge in Pope Lick, Tennessee. Um, <laughs> But then I thought, no, got to drag everything to the top of the bridge. What if the ghost train comes? What if the ghost train comes? Um, then we got to jump off the bridge. And I'm not, I'm not doing that, no. So then I thought, like Dean, I thought the catacombs in Paris. Um, I, I got to dig it out. I, I don't know if we'll have it ready for this one. I have pictures of me, young Rodney, and then uh, a little bit older Rodney, uh, down in the catacombs. I'm fascinated by the catacombs. There's a great movie called um, As Above, So Below, where they actually allowed them to film in the catacombs. And it's a really good horror movie. I recommend it. Um, and I, one of my favorite stories, or, or stories, nonfiction things, is a, a story of a group of people who spent three days crossing Paris by going through the catacombs. They only had to come up once. They came up through a manhole, and it's really, really good. And, and if you see uh, As Above, So Below, you can actually see uh, by the little railroad that goes around Paris how to get down into the catacombs. Mm -hmm. All right, that said, I don't like to leave home. I don't like to leave Philadelphia. Um, the world isn't flat, but Philadelphia is. And if you sail too far, you'll fall off the edge. So there is a place in Philadelphia I'd like to record, and that place is the basement of the Edgar Allan Poe house. Oh. Yeah, it's where Edgar Allan Poe had recorded, uh, not recorded, had written The Black Cat. Um, I want to record there because I've already tested it. I went down there and made a, a convolution reverb, and we used it on a song that we did with MC Lars. I don't know if it ever saw the light of day. But oh, I just saw that, right? I heard it recently, and I was like, why oh. didn't we ever do anything with that? Yeah, the cat comes back. It does sound yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Lars, if you're watching this, release the cat comes back. I worked hard. I'm down in the basement of the Poe house, and I asked first. I said, can I go down here and, and bang on some stuff and make some noise and, and record it to get the re and the people were fascinated by the process, but they and Joe would loan me a Zoom recorder. So thank you, Joe. Um, they were fascinated by the process, but also there were people walking around above me and they could hear me down there banging on stuff. So that was fun. It's close to home which is nice. It's got a low ceiling. A lot of people are like, I want to record someplace with a high ceiling. Not me. I like basements. I like the sound of basements. I would like to record there very much. And I'd like to record there late at night. I think that would be fun. We took we took MC Lars there once late at night. And he tried to jump the fence. <laughs> Fortunately, Dean and I got him off the fence uh, and explained to him what happens if you get caught uh, breaking into a national monument. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm going to say, just because I know the sound is really good, and it's here in Philadelphia, the basement of the Edgar Allan Poe house. <laughs> next. I think I'm next. I would like to go to Memphis, Tennessee and go to an actual studio. Uh, it's known as Sun Studio, and it was originally Memphis, I think Memphis Recording Service, uh, started by Sam Phillips in the 50s. Um, and then it became Sun Studio uh, when he made Sun Records, I think. Um, lots of famous people recorded there. Roy Orbison, B.B. King, Alan, Wolf, Elvis Presley, of course, um, Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, and then it, what's that? Is that, is that it? No, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> Mark, Mark and Mindy, Laverne, Shirley, Stanford, <laughs> and Son. You too, Ringo Starr, John Mellencamp. 
Um, it wasn't a studio. It got sold in the se- in the early seventies, and then it was just a storage space for plumbing. We we got a tour of it in two thousand four, um, when we played in Memphis, and ever since then I thought that's this is really a cool spot. Uh, <laughs> uh to record i would like to go back there and record I, and you can still record you can record there and in 87 it became a studio again and uh that's when i think youtube recorded there Def Leppard recorded there and john mellencamp and lots of other people and it's it's a tourist attraction too so when uh but when when you book the time there the tourists don't come through at least that's what i was told <laughs> by our tour guide so I think that would be a cool spot. It has a lot of history and it's already a recording studio. So you don't have to bring your own gear to, to record. It's already set up. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's also a reptile farm and petting zoo. Is that correct? <laughs> That's in the back. <laughs> Ooh, special tour. <laughs> the gecko will give you a happy ending now. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I chose an anechoic chamber, which is, um, <laughs> basically the walls around it are set up. So all sound that's produced gets like dissipates through and it, it get, just kind of goes away, but it's also like really, everything's really loud to your ears because you don't hear like it's in a chamber. So it's basically like making a sound outside but you're inside and you just don't hear it echo. So it like freaks you out and you can hear your heart beating and you can hear like the world turning. <laughs> but I figured if you had headphones on and like you did some really interesting stuff, like quiet music, see what it would sound like recording it. Um, <clears throat> I also thought about a raft on the ocean, like if a band was recording on the ocean with a generator, I guess. Um, and in space, but I don't know if that would work. Oh, I think didn't one of the uh, astronauts on the uh, space station take a guitar up there? I forget. Yeah, huh. yeah he uh, did Space Oddity, yeah. Yeah, he did a yeah. video for Space Oddity. And if you're recording on the ocean, you don't need, actually, you do not need a generator. You can just use the energy of the dolphins, Matt. Yeah. Oh, send us love and energy. Water turbines. Um, actually, Dan, I also... I thought about um, like for uh, trying to go to different studios, like maybe 15 different studios where they like offer like a free song. So you get an entire album recorded for free at 15 different studios. <laughs> and then the last thing I thought of was it's not really about recording, but like uh, if somebody started a band in a room and then like when somebody left, somebody else would come in and you just did that continuously, see how long you could do that. Um, but you'd have to have a nice spot where, you know, it'd be easy, easy access to a instrument and stuff. I've never searched online, Dan. Did you search? Have, has anybody put a video out there where they've, like, gone into one of those chambers and played, like, an acoustic guitar or a drum set or anything? I didn't look, um, but I did see that there was one that went to, like, negative 26 decibels, which we can only hear zero and above. So what's going on mm-hmm. under that? <laughs> Did you see the second season of um, Castle Rock? This no, guy has really has one of those in, in a van. Uh, not a van, in a mobile home. And he doesn't use it for fun. <laughs> yeah, I just imagine it would sound similar to recording outside, except without the wind and, like, children playing in the background. Like, you know, like, nature sound. It would just be, like, I don't know. Dead. Sound just comes out of the instrument and dissipates immediately. They, they use these to test, like the the loud, like how loud something is, like a washing machine or a motorcycle or whatever. They just um to be able to test like how truly loud it is. I guess so it doesn't like freaking deafen people. Yeah, you can only remain in those rooms for a small Not even an hour. Time. They said, yeah, without going cuckoo for cocoa puffs, man. You will. Yeah, I mean, I. I um, what is it? Deprivation chamber is like, um, kind of like that too, but I think you're alone in it. Um, yeah. Water? I don't know. 
Yeah, well, that's, you're floating, yeah, floating in, salt, in salt water. Yeah, you're floating in salt water. I had, back back up answers states. My, I had the backup answers because I wasn't sure what it would sound like in an anechoic chamber. If any of you people want to comment on any of you like no, yeah. acoustic physicists or something. If you're that smart, why are you watching this show? <laughs> I, I, pass, I pass by one all the time coming home from work. And I always see, and I looked it up once and I was like, whoa, that's awesome. And I see it all the time and I still think, hmm, it'd be cool to do that in there. So oh, when this question came up, I was like, oh. Oh, you mean the tank or the chamber? Yeah, th there's a chamber out here. Oh, okay. I knew that. I'll get, we'll put coordinates uh, <laughs> in the link. Um, cool. Great answers, everyone. Uh, let's go to recommendations. Um, I would like to recommend a YouTube video by a gentleman named Adam Conover, who describes himself as a, quote, stand-up comedian, a television host, and a curious person who never stops asking questions. Um, the video is called, Why There's No Such Thing as a Good Billionaire. And it's about 20 minutes long. And uh, Adam is a very enthusiastic uh, young fellow. And uh, I pretty much agree with every goddamn thing he says in this video so you got to check it out it's pretty intense hey dean is adam the guy that showed up on young turks the other day they had a guy who showed up at a school board meeting i actually uh my my november radio show i began with a clip of him and he is hilarious he's like i am a patriot and i like free speech i who's for free speech i was like yeah he goes, i'm for free speech except for pride flags <laughs> also certain things being taught in school it is it is and this, you can watch the people in the school board meeting suddenly realize they're they're being yanked around and it is really good i'd like to see that if that's him i, I would love to see it. yeah I, I, the name sounds kind of like the name of the guy it is really really good um and very brave okay so um in my turn yes okay. a recent article in the new york times of london said that people who keep saying both sides are the same never heard of something called world war ii all right, let's do music that you won't see on the radio and hear on TV. Uh, this week, I'm actually just recommending a song, and the song is called Dix Incorporated, featuring Chelsea Dawn. I don't know who Chelsea Dawn is, but she sang on a song called Dix Incorporated, and it is by the band Featured. It's the closest thing I'm ever going to come to on this show for recommending a pop song. It is damn catchy. Part of it kind of reminds me of like a like a peppier version of Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath by Black Sabbath. But there's also a video for it. And the video is excellent. So we're going to give you links to the EP, the Dix Incorporated EP. And we'll give you a link to the, to the video. All right. And if you need scary Halloween music, there's my radio show, the October, the super scatty October episode is out. All right, now my big recommendation for this week, or my other recommendation is, let's bring back Photomat. Now, I know some of you are thinking, wait a minute, Rodney Anonymous of the Dead Milkman, why do I need Photomat? I've got, a, I've got a bunch of songs on my phone. Yes, but those songs are, di are digital. You need to experience the warm, analog feeling of picking up your photos at Photomat. Now, we can do this two ways. The first way is you drop off your phone at Photomat. And in about a week, you come back and we will take the pictures from it and we will print them out, possibly using some carcinogenic chemicals. We will print them out on paper and you take that home. The other way is that we sell you a $1,200 camera so you can enjoy the full warm analog feeling of having these pictures. So you still have to drop the film off and pick it up. But mm, 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 it's a good feeling. Now, I've even got a marketing plan for this. The first part of the marketing plan is we hire hipsters to sit in coffee shops listening to photograph albums, you know, out, vinyl albums, you know, with headphones, and just sitting there. And next to them, they'll have their photo mat pictures. And people will say, ooh, I'd like to learn more about this. It worked once. And then the other thing is we're only going to open in two locations. Right. One will be in Brooklyn, New York, and the other one will be in Portland, Oregon. And then we will have a motto. Ready for Photomat's new motto? It is <clears throat> Photomat. If people in uh, Brooklyn and Portland do it, you morons will do it too. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. That's this week's recommendation. Dan, didn't you work in a Photomat years ago? Oh, yeah. For several <laughs> years, yeah. Okay. Did you well, enjoy the warm yeah. analog feeling? No, it was annoying, actually. <laughs> and the chemicals, 
I, dude, I don't know what that was, but it, like, you know, the ammonia feeling when you breathe in ammonia, that times like 50 and you feel like you're dying for a second when you're just near this. And I would, I, they told me to pour it down like the mop sink drain. And I was like, I don't know if we're supposed to be doing this. I probably shouldn't even be talking. About it. Yeah. Ben Jordan has a really good video about a uh, type of media that actually releases nasty toxic chemicals like that. It's not good for anyone. Joe, so that's it. I recommend that you go see the Dead Milkmen at the Wrecker or Wrecker. The, the Reacher. The Reacher. The Reacher. Ah. Reacher around. <laughs> the Reacher. Jack Reacher. Yeah, Jack Reacher. Like the like the film. The Reacher, because we will be there. The if you're watching this on Saturday tonight. Tonight, Cal's in Maryland. So yeah, go see us. Play. October twenty second. 2022. And if it's after that, then just go back in time. 10, 22, 22. Hi, this is Brandon from Townsend. I wrecked my stepdad's El Camino the night before the prom. <laughs> um, I would like to recommend uh, reading, but reading aloud too. So if you have kids, do that. If you don't, don't. Read to a pet. Uh, Read out loud to yourself and do like an accent or another voice. Um, read to your friends or your parents or just one of your parents. Um, read to a, 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 a grave if your parents are in one. Yeah, anybody in a grave. You just read aloud. It's cool. I feel like you kind of, <clears throat> uh, kind of get the information from a book in like a different way or in like multiple ways. Oh. Dan, did you know that when reading sort of first kind of caught on again in the Middle Ages, everybody read aloud, even if you were alone? For real. No, that reading know. reading in with the, with the internal voice was actually a fairly new thing. Well, considering, it, yeah, that's how they passed down the story. Like, without writing, they just spoke everything for so long. We're just transitioning out of that, I guess. Now we just text... Or we do these video calls. Read your text aloud on the subway when I'm riding in the morning. <laughs> That's good. Walk into your phone like a pizza. Yeah, always makes me happy. <laughs> like a pizza? <laughs> like a piece of pizza, you know? People what? hold their mm. freaking phones. So, yeah, Mom, I'll be over like, a, you know, 2.30 this oh, afternoon geez. and pick you up and take you to the uh, podiatrist. And, like, <laughs> nobody needs to hear that. Shut the fuck up. Like a walk like an Egyptian kind of thing. <laughs> they found your head. <laughs> walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> Talk like an Egyptian. Oh, hey, you folks at home want to make some money? Make, like, a Weird Al type video. We'll call it Talk Like an Egyptian. Now people talking into their phone. <laughs> You will be, you will be so super rich. You're gonna hate yourselves. Is that uh, it? Yeah, spider. Hey, but... Before we go, I want to tell you guys what next week's will be, folks. Next week's will be our super scary show. I'm gonna give the guys the topic now, secretly behind your backs. <laughs>